So now on step nine, this one's gonna be simulating more of how you'd actually do it in the game. So say you're playing a game and you've got your player one and then you've got, you know, the NPC is your helper and their player two. And then we've got another team that's your enemies and you want to be able to deal with them. Um, and so what you'll want to do is uh, figure out how to tell the difference between the, the four players or in this case even if it's just showing teams, um, figure out the difference between the two of them and then do infinite health more or less for your, you know, whatever team you're on and then a one hit kill more or less with the other team. So first we'll want to start with at least finding one of the values and see where that leads us. This one is telling us it is in fact a float. This is where normally you'd kind of scan and then play with a little bit and see whether or not you're getting the right thing. Um, so like there we can see we're not finding anything so we'd want to try again and change our value type to float. Um, keep in mind double is actually a float as well. It's just a double precision and then this is single precision. It's often also called a single. Um, so we can see we do have a, a clean 95 there. Oh, I don't know what I meant to do. Um, so we increase our value. We see it's looking right. Let's go ahead and see what access is at. change our value stop that um, we can see here it's actually looks like it might be right in between here to somewhere um, so what we want to do is find out what addresses run through this and we can then go ahead and kind of play the game a little bit essentially it doesn't automatically pick it up you can change the type to be what you need it to be and we can see here that all of these uh, come up you know they all run through the same function so just simply doing an infinite health wouldn't actually help us because it would just give everybody infinite health that's not what we want to do now again there's a couple different ways to do this we could actually sit here and look through the registry, see if we can find something different. So it looks like right off the bat, our other team, ESI, is always going to be in a uh, 1. So we could just use that to filter everything out. We can even test this, this theory. That's not what I wanted to do. Find out what addresses accesses this instruction again, or what addresses this instruction access. Um, but then from here, we'll want to view our breakpoint list. And then set slash change conditions. And go to one, or easy. And then just keep in mind this is Lua. So you want to do the all uppercase for the registries. And then just do a simple Lua kind of compare. Um, normally, you'd want to keep it hex. This one's one, so it really doesn't matter. But again, just to illustrate that, we'll keep it hex. So now on this one, if we actually go ahead and play the game, we can see our side doesn't go through that, but this side does. So we can keep that in mind to do our compare, but sometimes it's even just as good to actually look at the structure and you know, we can actually even look at the code to see where it's reading that, you know, if it's actually reading that ESI to determine something, some difference between the two. Um, but it may not be anything special, that may just be a random coincidence this time around and the next launch it'll be something completely different. So if we select all of them. We can actually open them up inside the data structure now. Uh, Darkbyte added this option. It makes things a lot simpler. You used to actually have to read the addresses and subtract the uh, offset and all that. So we'll start a new window. 
you can pretty much just click yes on all this. If it ever doesn't load up the options, you can just go to fill get or auto guess, and then that'll start that back up and re guess stuff. So we can kind of see here we do have a real simple structure. Um, it actually looks like we got team one, team one, team two, team two. sure what now that's something weird and then we've actually got the name here and then the end of our strings and then this would kind of be our our object more or less this may have to do with that same value or no that's our actually values isn't it yes it is so there's our value But, and as we can kind of see here, this even shows the, um, you know, the way the objects are set up. We've got, it looks like a class, a simple class name there. Um, and then this may be part of the function table, or it may just be further down in here somewhere. It's, you kind of just got to do some exploring to figure that out. Um, but not too complicated of an object in this case. So... So it looks like we got two ways to filter this out. This one looks a little cleaner, so this would be the method I'd want to go with, just because it seems like that registry may be too much of a guess, whereas this really does look like it's a team variable to me. So let's go ahead and get ready for some, some code injection, except this time what we're going to do... Is we're going to want to actually inject a... Um, do a a reroute or a hook um, and that's why we can put in more code than is in that spot so we've only got three address or three bytes here um, and then another two bytes the thing to always think about is it's gonna wanna take at least it's gonna take five bytes for the jump um, in 32-bit especially 64-bit it can take up to 14 but as long as you supply a um, an allocate near address when you're for your allocation it'll keep it close enough that it uh, it'll only need five bytes so if we go ahead and keep that instruction selected if we needed to move it up we could um, in this case having this down below our code won't really matter too much so we want to select auto assemble that'll open up an auto assemble or window or an auto assemble script window I actually always like to just do it's like template and then cheat table and then template again and then AOB injection is what I tend to like to go for. We could just do a simple address injection. Um, and then usually you need to give it a unique name because it's going to be a registered symbol. This way it can inject and then when you disable it will know where that spot is again. And that just makes things a little simpler. Uh, naming conventions are kind of, everybody's got their own opinion. I just do it this way for, for me, more or less. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. And one thing we would is, you know, uh, generally is a good idea is to go ahead and double check your AOB. And make sure it's only finding one instruction. Usually doesn't have to be too crazy, but sometimes you may find that you need to add to that. If it does find two, and you really can't narrow it down more than you know a few, but yours is coming up, you know the actual spot you need is the first address, and then you're fine because that's how this works. It pretty much just scans everything. Um, in this case, we're using AOB module scan, so it's everything within the EXE is going to be scanned for that and once it finds the first thing it stops when it's on auto assembler the ASM scripts um, or cheat engine auto assembler scripts so now this is a point where I normally just go ahead and assign it to the table so I don't lose track of it um, you can just execute it from there but again I like to be able to enable disable and mess with it as I go now we can do a couple things here so like one thing I want to illustrate is we can 
actually store our address and view it later and use that for debugging or as a, you know in our own pointer or as our own pointer um, on the table so since we really couldn't I didn't see a necessarily great way to tell the player apart um, I think there was something there that looks like it could be used but we'll just say like team one and team two the way I usually do it though is just go ahead and Some long text. So what I usually go ahead and do is get that selected, then we can throw it down in here. So as long as it stays within new mem and not somewhere down in our injection point. What we can do go ahead and align just so it'll look nice when we're viewing this later if we go to view it in the the actual injection point in the uh, or the memory view window um, setter label so it knows where it is and then in this case 32 bit we just need a, a double word I believe that's actually double data is what that's supposed to stand for. Um, so we'll give it a default value of zero. And then what we can do is go ahead and store our base there. Then we can use that base on the for a pointer and then just give it a single offset of four and this will always point to anybody that last ran through this function. Now we could decide to say let's go ahead and add you know an extra one for for our team and then I even for debugging I like to go ahead and add one to have everything that doesn't fall within the parameters I check. So what we want to do is compare, um, I don't think I remember what that offset was. So if you do like I just did here, close too many dang windows out, one thing we can do is go ahead and kind of retrace our steps here. Get each of our addresses again, open that back up, new window. And we don't need a new structure. If you name your structures, that's where this can be real helpful if you're doing multiple stuff. So our team offset was one zero. Um, sure we stopped everything. We don't necessarily want to be debugging a bunch of stuff when we don't need to. So EBX plus one zero. I want to compare that to one, and then say jump if not equal and then in this case we could actually create some new labels like we've got for our code and return and stuff like that but uh, we can also just use the generic system so we want to say jump forward to the next label and then we can do a, a generic label with an add at symbol um, so here this will be our team one and so for team one, we want to actually make this an infinite health since we didn't really see anything that looked like our, our um, full health. We didn't see a 100 and a 500 kind of deal. Um, sometimes you can even do that and then use that as a way to find the uh, the difference between people that's a real lazy way to do it but it does actually work in some cases um, so we want to give ourselves infinite health here or team one infinite health um, so let's just go ahead and set that EAX to a hundred now since like I said this is you know by default 
um, ASM and that's going to be hex in this case uh, so we don't want to do a hundred without doing something special to do it I there's a, you know some shorts for it I like to actually type it out this way it's a little more you just I see that and I see int and I don't have to think even for a second what that means you know uh, in this case obviously it's integer so we're telling cheat in we want to integer for a hundred and it'll know that in that case in this case integer we're saying actually uh, that it's a base 10 and not hex um, so that'll freeze our health but now we also want to do an infinite health uh, or a one hit kill so let's just go ahead and copy all that change that to 2 for checking for team 2 and now if it was 64 bit we do need to use a plus 8 but since it's 32 bit um, and we're just using double words we can just do a plus 4 and then that'll actually set our you know this will be team 1 this will be team 2 um, now this one I think we want to actually go with a negative value here negative 1 um, it may work with just 0 some games you really want to start off with 0 some of them you even have to do just set it to 1 and actually do a check to see if it's already below that or not um, this one's pretty simple so we won't need to put in a bunch of extra checks and then at this point to actually read along with the code basically what we're doing is our injection point is here it's told to jump to new man it comes up here and then we compare that base plus 10 the value at that address to 1 and if that then we stay in this block if it's not that then we jump and then we check this to see if you're on team 2 if you're not on team 2 then again we jump forward and it just this you know this way if there's something unknown some other you know other team or whatever whereas we could technically just leave this as a default after team 1 the only difference there is we want to make sure we put in a jump to our code to our original code to make sure we don't go through this at all um, for optimization I tend to like to do that now in this case the way it will compile all this back into machine code it there really won't be a label to even read through it just this will be the, ex the next line in this step of instructions um, and then it does uh, loads a floating point zero um, I'm not going to go too much over what all that is we don't need to worry about that yet but then after that it jumps to return which we've got stored down here after our injection point um, if it wasn't five bytes the original instruction um, we would need some no ops here just pad it out but again that's why using the templates is best because it'll cheat engine will do all that for you it makes it real simple uh, less likely to mess up and then my biggest thing is it, it gives you this automatically this way you can even with updates and stuff like that if you got to change you can actually use this to re refine your AOB even better and just really know exactly what's changing and what's not and you know for example if we needed to go ahead and actually start our AOB up here we could do that um, with the way this one's set up we'd actually have to make sure we put our offset you know say plus three if we we're going to the next instruction both here and here um, you can even kind of redefine another label and place it down below the plus three and use that uh, I actually tend to use the define instruction um, although that one's kind of weird and it's really not set up to I even had dark bike literally tell me it's not set up to do that but it just happens to work so I kind of gotten lazy and do that a lot uh, so not really the best idea I'm not even going to show it here <laughs> Like I always want to check my no ops, make sure the padding here would be correct. Um, since we didn't really move it, it's not an issue, but still double checking that sometimes is just a good idea. I know I've goofed up a lot because of that. That's usually my biggest goof up is uh, not padding or padding too much and screwing up the next instruction down or whatever. Um, but everything looks good. We can go and click OK. It didn't come up with any errors. Um, if we did have some kind of syntax error when we click OK, that's when Cheat Engine rechecks it and looks 
but even there, about the only thing you might get sometimes if you're not attached to the process, addresses like that won't work out and whatnot. So now we enable our our script there, and what we can do is grab that pointer base, stick that there, use our offset. No, it wasn't one four, was it? Yeah, plus four. So on the, the offset of four for our value, and then we can even do team twos now come down here and add four to that to get to that same offset or restored team two. Um, and then we'll run that autoplay and see what happens more or less. We did right, we did right. If not, we'll have to try again. Ow, oh, I moved into yours because I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to leave this in just to kind of show mistakes are made. Basically, we want to change this to float and this to zero. You know, going negative one didn't work. Um, and then, yeah, that's why it's a good idea to always check your types. And a lot of times it's just a guessing game to see what's going to work and have the effect we're looking for. Um, I've gone ahead and relaunched because I did double check. Um, so if we go ahead and re-inject, we can see that our addresses have actually not changed at all. Um, so we can even follow this and see how it assembles and you can kind of get an idea of how, how this works. So we can see our compare, the jump, obviously labels aren't really there, but then uh, so we've got a float value of 100 being pushed in there, and obviously in hex it's a lot different. And then we're just zero in that one. Um, another way we could actually do this too, since uh, zero for float is the same thing as zero for hex and zero for you know uh, base 10, um, and even base 2 really zero tends to be pretty pretty much the same. We can x or eax with the AX and because of the way XOR works it'll zero it out basically any two but you know any two bits that are the same set the same it'll zero those so now we go ahead and enable that and restart game and autoplay we can see that Team 2 died, we've got infinite health, and that ends the tutorial. Um, apparently now it launches this, I may do this at another point. Um, but thanks for watching. Um, hope the homes didn't drive you crazy. Have a good night everybody.